Welcome everyone to the Express Entry Live Q&A. And yes, we will answer some questions about other areas of immigration, but Express Entry tends to drive the ship over the last little while, especially because we have not seen rounds of invitations. So I'm Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer, and I want to uh, express a sincere Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays to all of you. Uh, I am a Canadian immigration lawyer practicing out of my home office here in Lethbridge, Alberta. And so uh, it's great to have all of you tuning in and watching and being a part of this with me. Um, we've got lawyers in Calgary and Toronto and Ottawa and all over the place. So it is delightful to have you here. This uh, is the Wednesday edition. If you guys recall, we also have tomorrow at, a, at noon, new time, remember, noon, Mountain Time. <clears throat> Alicia is going to join me and we're going to have another Q&A tomorrow as well. So these are our regular offerings. Um, but yeah, it is uh, super cold here, you guys. It is really cold. <laughs> I don't know what the temperature is where you are all over the world, but if I pull it up here for my fine city of Lethbridge, it's minus 30 degrees Celsius here. It sure felt colder than that, I'll be honest. Uh, but it is really good to see that... Uh, um, in our efforts here to get things figured out. Um, <laughs> yes, Manzur, uh, does being in the pool affect my postgrad work permit application? So we've got a bunch of questions here, but I'm happy to see that that uh, YouTube is connected and I'm able to pull the comments in. So will there be a draw today? We will see. This is the age old question, isn't it? So we've looked at this and we can see here that the rounds of invitations, the last one was November the 23rd. And we also know that the rollover to tier was to a large extent the reason that there were problems. But we have gone almost a full clear month now and there has not been any draws. Um, this fellow right here has been pretty tight lipped about what he's gonna do. Um, you know, we know that in the new year, sometime in the spring, the targeted draws are gonna start. But at this stage, uh, Minister Fraser here has been very tight-lipped about what is happening with Express Entry. I'm assuming, and this is all that we can do. And it's interesting, I, you know, when I go on Twitter, I get a lot of people who post comments to me and they say, what is going on? Why is there, um, you know, why is there no draws? You know, don't say that there's a glitch. Well, <laughs> glitch or no glitch, the GCS key system, the IRCC secure portal is a mess. And when they rolled over to this new five-digit um, <clears throat> NOC 2021, it had significant ripple effects. And I don't know who they're hiring as their, uh, you know, as their tech support and the developers, but <clears throat> it's been a disaster. And so that's all at this stage that we can, <clears throat> that we can prognosticate is that the draws are delayed because they're still trying to work out those issues. And uh, so anyone who's asking about, you know, do we have a draw? What, what is gonna happen? Um, there's, a, you know, there's, there's as good a chance as any that they're going to do it today. So we are just about one clear month away uh, from the last draw. And if we look at the, um, actually let's scroll back here. If we look at the, the number of individuals, and let's go back one more window here. So if we look at the number of individuals here that were in the pool at the time in which this draw occurred, you can see that this is absolutely, it's, it's gonna be filling up even more. And, uh, and if we're at 491 here, uh, realistically, this is probably going to go up to 493 or 494, probably at least, but we'll just have to see how it plays out. But yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat as you guys. Like I've been very, very disappointed with how these characters have managed the immigration um, process. And um, I'll share another little connection here. So once again, if we if we if I slide over and share my screen here. So this is what we have as far as Twitter, right? So this is all, it's spin, spin, spin. And minister, I would love to see action, right? So we've made significant progress. They're very good at patting themselves on the back to reduce, reduce backlogs and modernize the system. We digitized applications. We've hired new employees. We've streamlined processes and our harness tech automated technologies to increase efficiency. We processed two times as many applications this year, a total of 4.8 million. Like, and so there's a lot of, um, emphasis placed on uh, what they're doing, right? And so lots of money <laughs> has been on producing spin and why everything is so good. But it does not change the fact that you guys are suffering and that the, 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 the decisions that the department made in the past years have directly impacted on the world that we're seeing right now. And so 
no matter how much they, you know, they, they put into this in terms of, uh, you know, marketing and publicity and promotions, the reality is it is just you know, it, yes, there's unprecedented interest in Canada. And as we watch this together, you can see <clears throat> they continue to set the bar high. That's great. And the number of work permits, yes, have been significant. 698. Well, they basically shut things down in, a, you know, in, in 2021. So that's not surprising the numbers would be higher. And then study permits, 504,221 up to 671. And uh, permanent residents, yeah, we, we see all this. This is great. But the reality is millions and millions of dollars have been pumped into here in order to get, um, uh, you know, these things sorted out. But yet we're still seeing people separated from family members and we're seeing a ton of problems with people who are trying to get work permits inside Canada. You know who you are, who maybe through no fault of your own have fallen out of status and now are trying to restore and are looking at processing times that are off the charts. And we've had a lot of discussions over the over the past months, uh, weeks and months about these processing times, right? So if we look right now and we look at a work permit and let's say we want to tackle just a work permit from within Canada, okay? Initial and an extension. Like, look at this. This is insane. You're forced to do online. But 167 days, seriously, like real people's lives are being affected by this, you know? And so I, I, I look at these things, I look at these steps and, and that's fine. Congratulations, you know, minister. I'm glad that there's been, you know, good, you know, good uh, developments and you're accomplishing good things and you're increasing processing. But when you make a decision, when you make a decision <clears throat> at, a, at a cabinet level to bring in over 500,000 new immigrants to Canada or to open the doors for international students or workers, you have to take the responsibility of doing it in a managed way, a way in which you have resources to handle it. And so when I look at this situation and I see, you know, I see everything that's happened, um, you know what, the, the time has passed now for, for patting ourselves on the back and what has to happen now is real change. And those millions of dollars, taxpayer dollars that have put into processing, modernizing the system, over a billion dollars with the refugee portfolio, all those decisions have ripple effects. And you have to think about those before you, you know, before you go out of your way to spend time with these lovely promotions, right? Patting yourselves on the back. So thank you for the good things that you're doing, Minister. But my goodness, you need to step up and you need to get these issues resolved because real lives are being affected. All right, so let's leave it at that for now. And um, and what we'll do is uh, we'll do uh, some shout outs here. If you're a new person tuning in for the first time, I want to hear where you're tuning in from. And hopefully you uh, uh, you had a chance to, um, uh, uh, to, to, to figure out kind of what's going on here. But it's all about questions and answers. And uh, as we wait for a few more people to connect in, um, I just have a special message from our law firm. So Merry Christmas to all of you. It is an exciting time. I can't believe it's only four days till Santa comes. <laughs> I, uh, I should have brought my, uh, my Santa hat is what I should have wore today. Um, do you know what? I'm going to be back. <laughs> Just give me a second.
Okay, I'm back now. Now I feel proper. I couldn't believe I thought I had one more live. And yes, I do with Alicia, but I thought I had one more live before um before Christmas was here. And it's just totally <laughs> it's totally came in and surprised me. Why have I lost track of time? Well, it's because of this. It's because the study permit course is now live and I've got a great group of people here taking this course. And, uh, and so this week I've been pumping out videos and producing content and, and I'm actually really, really happy with how uh, the study permit course has, uh, has evolved. And um, yeah, we, each evening and there's still time to register and join us. Uh, but the sessions are going this evening um, from 4 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So definitely connect in. Okay, let's see uh, what else we have here. <clears throat> so Cher says a prediction for the uh, possible EE draw. And I said probably about 494 probably or 493 would be the draw if they were to do it. Um, okay. Uh, oh, no. And <laughs> Noor says 20 degrees in Morocco. Oh my goodness. I wish it was 20 degrees. I wish it was. Okay. Let's see here. We'll wait for some other people. Um, okay. Uh, Thissura says it's minus three here in North York. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then, okay, this uh, ZW233 says yesterday, lots of Express Entry profiles are updated, including mine. Yes. Everybody's been doing that. Okay. Hello, Sika. We'll get to the questions in just a little bit, guys. Um, uh, we've got uh, Asalamu, good to see you as well. And uh, we've got uh, Taslima, good to have you connecting in here. So please do post where you're tuning in from. Uh, Sika is, the, is in Dhaka in Bangladesh. Thank you for connecting in. Great to see you, Okarut, as always. Uh, let's see who else we have here. We've got Mitch. He's over in Ireland. Thanks for connecting in. Glenn's over in the Philippines. Hello, Glenn. Great to have you here. Uh, <clears throat> Gutierrez over on Facebook. Hello. How are you? Um, uh, Saif says, cute video. I have an ITA and currently completing my application for the express entry. That is wonderful. I had uh, three consultations this morning before I jumped on the live stream. And, and I just, yeah, I just absolutely Love to hear when people get their invitations to apply. We love working with um, with our clients, and it's interesting. The there, uh, I think it was Chanel had a consultation with someone last week, and uh, they booked a consult. And I talk a lot about coming to our website, right? I say go to our website and book a consult, speak to a lawyer. Well, for whatever reason, the person actually didn't even realize that we represent people, that we, you can retain us to help you with your applications. And so, um, yeah, we now have our, our Google ratings in here. Um, and remember, we are a firm that really, um, we didn't even set up our Google reviews until probably about a year ago. So, um, yeah, so only a year ago did we actually start doing Google reviews. But it's, yeah, this, this number, I take great pride in that 4.9. And yes, we have a client-centered, firm-supported approach. And when you go to About Us and you click on our approach, you'll learn that the best time when you get your ITA is then to reach out to us because we work directly with you in your own portal to make sure that everything is correct. And that's a service that we offer and it's the foundation of our firm. So for many people who received invitations to apply, it's just when you click on Speak to a Lawyer, that's where you initiate the process of, of retaining us. So it starts with a consult because the last thing in the world we want to do is take someone's money when we feel that they don't qualify. And interestingly enough, I have had consultations where people have ITAs and I've had to tell them that they actually are not qualified. They, they didn't meet the requirements when they thought they had. So uh, that's why we start with that consult. Fernando says, hey, Mark, from Winnipeg, not in Panama City, Panama anymore. Well, congratulations. What's the temperature there? And then we've got Mariana. Great to see you again. Have a very Merry Christmas as well. Thank you so much, Mariana. Merry Christmas to you. Um, okay, and then we've got a bunch more questions. Uh, King says, 26th of December, I will be in Toronto as a student. Congratulations. That's awesome. Um, Kiyur says, it's minus three in Toronto. Okay, King's over in Toronto. Okay, John is up in Fort McMurray, minus 30 here. Looks like it's the same temperature. Gutierrez is in Calgary. Welcome. And it's Rob. Great to have you here, Rob. 
And uh, let's see. And uh, Okrut says, much love from Uganda. So just a few shout outs just to start off our, our live Q&A today. Okay, so what I want you to do, and <laughs> Fernando says it's minus 25 in Winnipeg. All right, so what I'd like you to do is, uh, is to initiate, um, oh, let's see here. Uh, Timothy says, hey, Mark, thanks for the great work enjoying here in Uganda. Please talk about study permit delays. Hey, processing times, what do you say? Like, I don't know what you say. The minister is very good at pointing out here uh, all of the positives and that they've processed twice as many applications this year and 4.8 million in total. But when you're, you've opened up the, the, the application process and, and yes, Canada is more, um, you know, is, is people, more and more people are looking to come to Canada. I understand all of that. But this is the question, right? Your question is as good as mine, Timothy. What is going on with the processing? And I'm, I'm at a loss for answers, right? I'm at a loss. So it's something the department's going to have to work out. Um, okay, and then uh, Punjabi United's in Atlantic, Halifax. So he's in Halifax, four degrees. Oh, it's nicer out there. Definitely nicer out there. Okay, um, all right, let's, uh, let's, well, let, what you can do now, a couple of rules of engagement. So we'll start getting to the questions now. What I'd like you to do is make sure you put a Q in front of your question, just like IRB Fox. <laughs> so I think this is Brie, is it? I, can, I'm, I can never remember. Um, so hi, Mark. Seasons greetings. How does being fired, quitting a job affect your PR application when only waiting for eCoper? Um, it, 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 in the context of your application, it comes down to whether or not you have a job offer associated with your application. And uh, if you have a job offer associated with it, then yes, that can have an impact on it. Um, but if the, there is no job offer where you're getting the extra 50 points, then it doesn't really play too much of a role in that process, okay? Uh, David says, hey, Mark, what is the best time for launching the application for Express Entry? Realistically, the moment you're eligible, that's the best time. And the longer you've had your profile in the pool, the more you can benefit from the tiebreaker rules in case the, the CRS round of invitation lands right on your score. Whoever's been in the pool the longest is going to have the greater chance of getting the ITA in the event they have a cutoff um, between the candidates that are all landing on the exact number of that round of invitation draw. So uh, that's where it comes into play. And David, obviously, if you have any, any questions or anything, like I always say, and I, and I usually ring the bell, slide over here and book a consult and we can help you to sort out truly in your situation uh, what your best strategy is, okay? All right, um, Ashtosh says, how easy to get a work permit after studying, including processing time and possibility of PR two years down the line or should look for another option, Australia, UK? Well, the reality is if you are studying in Canada, never, ever, ever do I ever want someone to... Um, uh, to uh, to take a program that's less than two years if they intend to become a permanent resident in Canada. If you've studied in a DLI that supports post-grad work permits then and your program of study is at least two years, then you can get up to a three-year open work permit. And it, it happens as long as you've chosen the right school. And that's part of the reason why I created the, the course. That's why I created this one was to help navigate your way through it. And I have a ton of uh, different topics and, and lessons and, and everything in here within the study permit course itself. And as you go through here, I'm just gonna pull this up and show you, we cover a ton of stuff, like when should you apply, how to prepare your applications, writing letters of intent, applying through the student direct stream, avoiding common mistakes, and how to prepare letters of explanation. All of these things are all associated with the, um, uh, the, the course, the materials that you have access to. And then we do our masterclass and we have a private group uh, where people can share insight and share their experiences. So the one frustration I'm experiencing right now, and yeah, there's a whole step-by-step -step process with it, but this right here is driving me crazy because CICC is not responding to me. And it's really frustrating. Um, I, we submitted the request over a month ago and I don't know what's going on there, but Anyway, so we're just waiting for that accreditation to come through. Um, yeah, and it's, uh, it's, you know, I've got a lot of immigration consultants that are taking the course right now. But those of you who are looking to come to Canada and want to learn more about the study permit process, this is a perfect solution for you. Okay? All right. So there's, uh, there's just a little bit of a, a lead into that that's happening right now. And there are links in the description below. <coughs> All right. 
Lucas says, hey, Mark, would it be reasonable to expect the CRS score to drop to 474 or below in January, February? I'm going to say absolutely no. Um, the only circumstance in which someone would probably be drawn at that level is if the minister decided to shift to occupation-specific draws. And then in that case, for sure, the, the minimum CRS score would drop. But realistically, no, I do not anticipate it January and February dropping down. The, the reality is there's just too many people in the queue, right? So if you look over here and you look at the who's in as of November 22nd, obviously we've had you know almost a full month now, so there's going to be way more people. But if you look down at your level, where you are down here, which is probably, you know, there's probably 9,000 or so that are in the, in the category right here, plus 10,000, you know, you've got almost 20,000 there, 23,000 here, you know, 24, 25, almost 26 or 27,000. And with each round of invitation generally being right around, you know, under 5,000. Yeah. It's not, it's not likely at all that, uh, that you would um, see an ITA coming through unless the minister went to something that was more targeted. Okay, and then, yes, another question, QR says. Um, any change uh, of postgrad work permit extension in 2023? Well, ultimately, what's the minister doing? We have not seen CEC draws. There's going to be targeted draws. Will he target international students? They're clearly a priority. And for those of you who have, um, let me just pull this up here. I say this quite a, quite a bit, but I, I really think this is one video that you absolutely want to, to uh um, to consider, um, let me just pull it up here so you can see it. I'm going to go here. If you have not watched this video, I strongly, strongly encourage you to do so. And it's this one here. So go to the YouTube channel, watch the TR to PR pathway. There's a reason it's got 45,000 views, but this TR to PR top six takeaways in there, I talk about what the minister, what his plans really are for 2023 and reading through the lines and pulling out the stuff that's not just fluff, but what was really what the minister was really getting at. So uh, I encourage you to, to check that out as well. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, let's get to Samrat's question here on Facebook. Okay, hello, Mark. This is Samrat from Niagara Falls. For a change, I have a question today from a friend who couldn't join in the live. Uh, is an upfront medical mandatory post-ITA along with your application submission nowadays instead of the earlier times when you had the option uh, of doing your medical when you get a medical request. I always, Samra, always, always will try to get the medical no matter what. But individuals in Canada, there's a provision that allows you to include a previously obtained medical within the previous five years if you are in Canada. If you're outside Canada, then you need to get that upfront medical. So it's as simple as that. But in all cases, I will encourage my clients to just get it. Okay. Um, okay, so John says, hey, Mark, is the public policy allowing non-skilled workers to get LMI still in effect? Thanks for answering. So understand there's no such thing as a public policy uh, for non-skilled workers. They've always had the ability to get a work permit based on an LMIA. So what's a non-skilled worker? Like a food counter attendant at McDonald's. There have been restrictions on the number of applicants that uh, a particular employer and the number of percentage of, of, of foreign workers in some industries um, they can only hire so many of the total employer employee complement. Um, there was restrictions on how many they could have, but LMIAs have, uh, for for non skilled workers have been around since I started my practice. You know, back in two thousand two, two thousand three, and so um, as long as the employer can show there's no Canadian or permanent resident to fill the position, and they advertise for it, then they can obtain a labor market impact assessment. And things are really, really uh, expanding. Yes, Bree, I remembered. Happy holidays. Are you taking a break for Q&As this season? Um, that's a good question. Am I taking a break? Let's see. I am going one day skiing with family. So let me just pull this up. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. So that is going to be next week. I think I will be back. Yes, I don't think I'm going to be taking a break, you guys. There's no rest for the wicked. So no, I'm actually not going to take a break. I will be going live again uh, next Wednesday. And so I will take some time off, um, you know, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but Wednesday I'll be back in the office. So I work, you guys, I work and the consults will be open. And that's another thing I want to point out too. Many of you who are watching these videos are wondering, will I be able to access any help from Mark or his team over Christmas? And unlike many firms, the answer for us is yes. We try to always be available to help you. 
And I have consult after consult after consult of individuals that have um, used other representatives who basically just check out over Christmas. And they say, sorry, there's, excuse me, nothing that I can do to help you. Well, we are actively working. <laughs> we are actively working in the firm. And so when you come to our website and you click on book a 25 minute consult, you will then have the ability to, to, to choose. And you can see here, I still have time tomorrow. I have room on the 28th and the 29th, right? So Wednesday, I'll be in the office. And so there's an ability for you to connect in and still book consults even with me over Christmas. Um, when you look to the other lawyers like Alicia, um, she has some days, more days off than I. Uh, and then you shift to uh, Chanel. Um, she's got days available. So you guys can see how this all plays out, right? Cedric, if you look at him, Cedric's got lots of availability. So unlike lots of firms who kind of shut down through Christmas, I pride, a, I, I pride ourselves in the fact that we're here to help you. And yes, we take time off. We do. I took a whole week off earlier in December because I knew that a lot of people would need help between Christmas and New Year. So that's the difference. That's the difference with Holthy Immigration Law. Okay, let us jump back into here and let's get to some other questions. All right, let's remove that one. Okay, um, okay, so here's a pretty common question we get from SAFE. All right, uh, oh my goodness, global news. Grocery prices up 11.4% in November. Oh my goodness. Oh. <sighs> inflation, inflation. And I'm sorry, I attribute that entirely to our liberal government and the decisions that they've made. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'm currently working in Quebec and I want to apply for express entry which is non-Quebec. So do I need to provide other any other documents when I'm filling, filing my post-ITA application? Safe, if you've got an invitation to apply, I strongly, strongly encourage you that you, you contact, you connect with our firm, and that you hire us to help you file your EAPR. Um, the, the reality is you say, you say your company does not allow remote work. This is one where not only do I encourage you to book a consult, and yes, that's we can talk about the logistics, but I actually encourage you to, to connect with us and hire us to help you. You can see here, our fees are posted here and we go out of our way. So you can see for express entry, $4,000 plus 5% GST is what we charge. But the reason I say that is because you have an obligation to demonstrate safe that you um, have an intention to live outside of Quebec when you're going through express entry. And if you are working in Quebec and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're living in Quebec and that's where you're connected, you are going to have a really hard time convincing immigration that you're going to be living outside of Quebec if all of your ties and all of the nexus that you have is with Quebec. Now, there's things that you can do, but if your employer, employer doesn't re, uh, allow for remote work, how is moving to Ottawa going to help you, right? Which might be a, a solution. Obviously, in every case, you have to show that you're actually going to move out. And there's... Um, there's a, there's a little bit of case law on that topic, uh, but ultimately the onus is on you to prove it and establish it. Okay, uh, Mariana says, should I wait to submit my application until after the holidays? Will it matter with all these tech issues with the portal? If you have your ITA, Mariana, you don't want to leave it too late. You don't. And um, yes, there's tons of issues still. And this is why people are saying, why hasn't there been a draw? Well, Mariana, you're living it, right? The, the reality is the work experience keeps flipping back and forth between a four-digit and five-digit knock code. Um, a spouses, accompanying spouses are not getting points. There's a number of issues uh, within the portal that they're trying to sort out. And so, you know, you don't want to wait too long, Mariana, but you definitely, yeah, you, 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 you know, sometimes you try to wait and let things settle down a little bit before you try to fix it, but you're kind of caught in this world where, you're, you're one foot in one world of, of, of knock 2016 and the other foot in the world of, of post-2016, the, the tier world. And that's what we're really running into in terms of issues. Okay. All right. Uh, Siva says, I have work experience from November 9th to November 7th, 2022. Can I consider it as one year experience? I have 1,560 hours with 30 hours per week. Um, possibly. <laughs> possibly you could consider that. It, uh, you know, does the work experience, did it actually come to an end on November 7th? Um, you know, technically, if you were to look at the right down to the day, uh, an argument could be made by an IRCC officer that you don't have the one year. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's possible to, you know, to argue that, well, when I wrapped up, you know, 
the, it was it was a weekend, and so really I've worked longer. But there's room there, Siva, for an officer to say no. And uh, ultimately, when you're filing these types of applications, you have to look at the holistic context. All right, we have a super chat that's popped in here. Uh, so this is Kyria. Kyria says, hello, Mark, waiting for PR under Express Entry, FSW. Should I apply for the IEC visa when it opens in January? 29 months processing time for FSW is a long time. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. Go ahead, apply for it. You know, this is, this is so absolutely irritating. And this is why I get so frustrated um, when the minister here posts comments like this, right? Patting themselves on the back at how wonderful they are that they processed twice as many applications this year. Well, for someone in your situation, like you're, you are in a situation where you're saying, well, thanks minister, but who cares? My application has been stuck for 29 months. Now, remember, here's one thing I want to point out that's really, really important. Um, in our law firm, you guys, in our law firm right here, I'm going to slide back over to our firm. Right at the top, you will see we have legal help as one of the headings. When you click on legal help, you'll see that there is uh, help for refused applications, help for delayed applications. And if you click apply for a writ of mandamus, this is a very detailed blog post that Cedric produced explaining how it works. And when your application has been in the queue for as long as it has, the question becomes, is it one of those unassigned? Have you looked to see if your application, Kyria, has been assigned to one of those um, inactive officer IDs and it's just stuck? Is that the case? Have you had other factors, dependents that are delaying it? But the reality is waiting for 29 months is just simply unacceptable. And that's a perfect situation for sliding over to our firm right here and then clicking on the link to, um, to speak to a lawyer, going down here to Cedric and booking a consult with Cedric so he can go over the possibilities. And even tomorrow, you can see he has lots of availability. Uh, this is mountain time. If you're outside of Canada, um, Cedric actually works, you can see, in, in uh, different time zones than we do so that we have more coverage. So I highly, highly recommend that you connect with Cedric and consider a, um, a writ of mandamus because it's just not acceptable. But yeah, there's nothing stopping you from filing an IEC. It's, there, there's nothing. And, and, uh, and uh, working towards that and considering that as a, as a way to get to Canada faster. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Okay, let's see here what we have next. Um, okay, uh, okay. so Unique Promise here says, will being in the express entry pool as an FSW affect my postgrad work permit application? No, not at all. Um, when you're in Canada on a study permit transitioning to postgrad, there will never be a situation where they refuse your application for lack of temporary intent or bona fides. You know, when you're filing uh, a postgrad work permit, um, if you do everything correctly, it will get approved. Simple as that. And no, having a permanent resident application in the queue will not affect it. Okay. Uh, okay. Your fantasy club says, will the immigration activities be closed due to the Christmas holiday? Singapore activities will also be closed. Yes. Yeah, so there, things will definitely are, are going to be scaling back over Christmas. Officers will take time off. Uh, there are statutory holidays for Christmas and and in some cases, Boxing Day in some provinces and New Year's. So yes, things will slow down. Absolutely. They just they just do. But things do not close. They still continue forward. Um, okay. AS says, how much do you charge for documentation verification after we have an ITA? That is a great question, AS. This is that document verification. It is not just looking at the documents to make sure they're correct. This is a direct lawyer to client collaboration. So we work, lawyer, Mark Holthy, together with you, I don't practice any other way. All of the lawyers within the firm, all of us here on our team, each of the lawyers works directly with our clients. There's no middle people. And when we do the review, it is not just a review or verification, you guys. I wish I could explain this better. But the process involved in our collaboration is a, it's a direct one-to-one -one walking through every single aspect of your application, identifying not only the weaknesses, but the mistakes. When, we're, when you're completing your EAPR, we also do not take control of your account. We use Zoom and a screen share. We have a box folder that we use to review document, documents. And uh, we go through every single document you have and we cross-reference it against all of your application. And we even go through, help you organize your files, review and revise letters of explanation, 
and upload the documents and even together submit them with you. I love Zoom because I don't need access to anyone's uh, passwords. I surrender control of the mouse. You control it. You type in your own login information and you submit it together all under the watchful eye of us as Canadian immigration lawyers. So that's how we do it. I'd strongly encourage you, AS, to slide over and, um, and uh, connect. Book a consult with me right away and let's get in there and let's do it. Um, you know, I can't tell you how often now people just don't realize that when it comes to permanent residence, often, often you just don't get a second chance. When things are wrong, the opportunities are going to slip away. And some of you who are basing your, your qualifications on human capital, it's all about the CRS score. If the minister shifts things the direction that he's going in the spring, even if you have 500 CRS points, it may not be enough if he starts to target. So this may be your only shot at getting these ITAs. We don't know for certain, but there's an, an enough evidence out there to suggest that these may be the only ITAs you will be able to get. And so you don't get a second chance. Okay, <clears throat> uh, Sayed, uh, Sayed says, applied for PR on December 18th from India under the FSW as a physiotherapist. Currently, I'm unemployed. Which uh, Wish to take up a job in the UAE in the meantime as a physio. Should I notify IRCC? Yeah, I would because your address is going to change, right? So I would notify them of that change. Okay. Um, okay. And Dave says, will there be a draw 520? At 520, if there is a draw and it's no program specified, yes, you will. Uh, and applied for PR from India. Great. Okay. Um, let's see here. Try to get enough people, get the questions from a mix of people here. Um, so if I've answered one from you, I'm probably going to skip past and go to someone else. Um <clears throat> Okay, yeah, Dave says, is there going to be an express entry draw because there were glitches reported? Yeah, the glitches are, are a reality. It's, it's bugs within the system that are causing people not to get credit for the scores that they have, um, causing confusion within the work history section. All of that is a reality. And uh, yeah, so obviously if there's a draw, you've got 522, you'll, you'll get an ITA. Okay, Lucas says, can you talk a little bit about the targeted draws that the minister has been talking about? Um, I don't know if that would make it easier or harder. That's a great, thank you for pointing that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you right back here. So, um, you know, with the time, I want to get to as many questions as possible. But I want you guys to go and watch this video. So TR to PR, top six key takeaways from the minister's report. So I strongly encourage you to go watch this video. It's only about 13 minutes. But in that, I break down exactly the direction the minister is going to go. And with Bill C-19, effectively, he has the ability to structure the draws in whatever fashion he wants. He could say these are just for post-grad work permit holders. This draw is just for people with knock codes, you know, you know, these five uh, knock codes under tier are, are going to be eligible for this draw. So he has the ability to really narrow it down into a specific cohort of people. He can say this is a CEC only draw um, that's designated for post-grad work permit holders with one year of work experience. That could be the, the narrowness is that he makes. He could say this is for any engineers or architects that are from the range of 460 points to 480 CRS points. He could do a slot draw. Like he has complete flexibility to do <clears throat> whatever he wants. And how does how do you know what he wants? Well, once again, if you flip over here and uh, we'll just have the minister step down a bit here. The tiered up here, I went through the report that he it, that he issued. And some of you are probably wondering, what is this report? So let's go through here. You'll see in in my explanation here, we've had 45,000 people that have watched this video. Um, you can see here that I have, I believe I have the link uh, to my blog post. Okay, so here's the blog post. And then in the blog post that I wrote, um, I have a link to the strategy to expand and transition to PR. So this is the actual report of the minister. And I went through and broke down a whole bunch of things out of here. And, uh, and then this is the, the PDF version of the actual, um, the official official document, which you can see is full of information. And I basically went through it for you pulled out the high points so that you don't have to uh, read it yourself. But it's all in this video, and I highly recommend that you slide over and that you take a look at it. Okay? All right. There we go. There you go. Let's see. <clears throat> Next. Um, 
Okay, Ashatosh says, what is the current scenario? Are students getting postgrad work permits after two year study? Why there's TR to PR in the first place? Okay, understand that postgrads are work permits. They don't allow you to remain in Canada permanently. The TR to PR, temporary resident, student, or worker, to permanent resident of Canada, they need to have a pathway. And right now, the pathways are not great. That's why they are, uh, the minister is uh, allowing these one-time post-grad work permit extensions to allow people to have more time until he reinitiates the draws. So that's basically where we're at. Okay, Alicia Ocampo says, Hey, Mark, Merry Christmas. After the study permit extension approval, is it mandatory to process the study visa? The one that is stamped on the passport, thank you. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what you mean by this. So after the study permit extension approval, is it mandatory to process the study visa? Um, I'm trying to figure out if it's an extension from within Canada. So if you, I think I understand what you're asking. There are two things when you apply outside of Canada for a study permit. If you're coming from a visa required country, you will actually get the approval of your study permit and then be requested to send in your passport to get a visa imprinted in it. That visa is linked to the, the term of your study permit, uh, sometimes the passport expiry. But when you come to Canada, your study permit, you may need to extend it. This, the permit itself can be extended from within Canada without needing to deal with the actual visa in the passport. You don't have to extend it at that time if you don't want to. You can do it after. So um, it's not mandatory if that's what, uh, what you're asking. Okay, um, let's see what else we have here. Okay, here's a great question. Timothy says, okay, why then? Could, what could possibly be the reason why some approvals of study permits of later applicants and yet people who applied as early as April are still on the waiting? Remember that there are multiple portals, you guys, for applying for a study permit. Some go faster than others. Some, I believe, are linked to Chinook. Others, uh, we'll just have to see. But there is an IRCC portal. Let's pull this up and let's, um, let's go here. So we've got the IRCC portal and then we have the secure one. So let's pull this up here. Okay, so... Just to clarify, you guys, we have two options for filing a study permit. One is through the traditional way, and I would never use the sign-in partner. I would always use the GC key, okay? And we have seen basically between the two portals, so this is option one, GC key. Then the other option is right here, and that's the, the IRCC portal that is specifically designed, and I'll just connect in here, and I'll just show you. This portal is specifically designed for temporary resident applications, um, da, 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 da. let's see here and figure out why that didn't work now. Let's try this again. Let's see if it works. Nope. Okay. Well, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> that should have worked. Anyways, this portal is only for the purposes of temporary applications. However, there are other things that you can do within it, but those are the two options. And so when you're, when you're looking to file your application, um, that plays a role, which portal you went through. It also plays a role in terms of the country in which you are, um, th that you're at. When there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of applications that are coming in. And if we look at the minister's report here and you see how many study permits were actually issued, it'll roll through this here. But if you look at how many study permits were actually issued last year, over 500,000 is what they are claiming. And we know that we're on track for, you know, I think they said they're on track for over 550,000. Let's see what comes up. So work permits, 2021, it was 196. They issued almost 700,000 work permits this year. That is absolutely insane. Study permits, you can see 500 last year. They're on pace for 671,000 this year. So when you have that many app, um, applications that are going through the pool, visa offices that have a greater demand are just going to take longer. And so that may be the role um, why some people submit faster. But we also know that some people have had experience, for example, on visitor visas where they filed through this new streamlined portal, um, the, the IRCC portal, um, and then their application stalled out. So then they filed through the GC key and then they got it processed faster. So th there's a lot of factors at play. Okay, um, uh, let's see. So Duigu uh, says, would there be any negative side on our express entry process if we apply for a postgrad extension to get some more time until they refuse it, although we're not qualified for the 18 month extension? 
this is what I recommend right here that you book a consult and let's look at your options seriously. I never advise people to file frivolous applications that are just going to get rejected. Okay. Uh, Satyaki says, uh, happy holidays. I was wondering if one receives an e-copper and has a valid TRV, can I use that TRV to travel prior to receiving a PR card? Thanks. No. Once you receive your e-copper and it's finalized, your TRV is no longer active. You won't be able to travel on it. It's actually canceled. Now, how quickly they do it? Um, uncertain, but in your situation, no, you want to wait for your PR card. Uh, if you travel away, you can do whatever you want on your passport. You can leave the country all you want, but it's coming back in that will be the problem. And you'll need your PR card if you are a permanent resident. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, Philong. I totally understand this. It's so frustrating. Got an Ontario nomination and of more than 900 points, but it seems to be disappointing to hopelessly wait for a draw. I know how frustrating it is, but hang in there. Hang in there. Um, Okay. Let's see what else is next. Okay, trying to get out of this. Okay, Kyrie completely uh, agrees. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Phi Long says, if I have a one-year work experience, but I'm currently being laid off and I am in the pool, if I'm invited, would my application be still eligible? Yeah, as long as the, the one year was in the previous three years. And if you receive an ITA, um, it doesn't matter. Even if you're in Canada, if you're drawn under the Canadian experience class, that application can continue forward. Okay. Um, Nisha says, can I apply for a visitor visa from inside Canada before my postgrad work permit expires? Okay, well, if you're talking about the visa that's imprinted in your passport that allows you to leave and come back, yes, you can apply for it, but often they will sometimes limit it to the expiry date on your postgrad work permit. If you're talking about can you switch from a postgrad to a visitor from within Canada, yes, you can apply to change conditions in that situation as well. Okay, Shakar right here is asking a very specific question. I'm just going to ring the bell and I'm going to encourage you, Shakar, to slide over to our website and uh, and click on the link below to book a consult with one of the lawyers in the firm uh, because this situation, I, won't, I don't want to give you specific legal advice without, um, especially as to your work authorization, without getting all of the facts. Um, Okay, so Preet says, do we need at least one year of experience to declare a knock as being primary? That's a great question. I have five plus experience, but only six months experience in the knock I want to put as primary. It depends on which program you're going through. If it's for the purposes of the Canadian experience class, then it doesn't matter which, um, which knock code you use as your primary. But for the purposes of the federal skilled worker program outside of Canada, well, the primary knock is where all of the assessment comes in for your eligibility for the FSW. And if you do not have at least one year of continuous full-time work experience in that primary knock, then you don't meet the eligibility requirements for the Federal Skilled Worker Program, which is the eligibility you need to get into the pool. Not talking about the comprehensive ranking score. It's just talking about eligibility under the Federal Skilled Worker Program. Okay. Um, okay. Car uh, uh, Carleel says, I do remote work in Ottawa for a company located in Montreal. Can I use my apartment lease in Ottawa to prove that I'm not in Quebec for, to apply for CEC? Well, if you're living in uh, Ottawa, it doesn't really matter if you're working for a company in Quebec, as long as you can demonstrate that you're truly living outside of the province of Quebec. Okay, let's see what else here. Just skipping through a few to get to some new people. Okay, so Shabazz says, can my soon-to-be spouse apply for a visitor visa from India before getting married, then follow inland spousal sponsorship? I'm a CEC inland applicant looking to avoid post-marriage TRV rejection. That is one strategy that you could consider, absolutely. Um, yeah, obviously, if the visitor visa is approved, she could travel to Canada and you could get married and then make a decision as to what you want to do going forward in the future. Um, but I would strongly encourage you to book a consult so we can talk about this and, uh, and then potentially retain our firm to help you with your application. That's really where our strength is, is when people hire us as their immigration lawyers to help them. Okay. 
Okay, yes, Prasun, absolutely. This is an issue. This is one of the main reasons why people, why we haven't seen rounds of invitations. So received the PNP nomination two weeks ago, haven't got the 600 points added to the profile. Yes, this is a known issue that we're seeing. Okay, Alicia says, how long is the work permit application process? Well, just go to the IRCC website. I've showed you guys this a lot. Go to the IRCC website and uh, just check processing times. You can just put IRCC processing times and then you can go in and you can click on whatever you want. Inside Canada, it's 167 days is what the current processing times are. All right. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Peters, good to see you. Okay. Hey, Mark. Minus 36 in Hill Spring. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too. Okay. Okay, Branded Voice says, I did my IELTS general in August 2021. Is there any possibility for tr to pr program or any policy to increase validity of IELTS? Well, they're not going to, I think you'll need to, like obviously it's valid for two years. So you've got it until August of 2023. The minister's going to do something in the spring and we'll just have to see what happens. I strongly encourage you to consider um, consider applying through um, a uh, like re rewriting your IELTS. That's you know and freshing and making sure that it's current. I would consider doing that or understand if you're in Canada, um, the CELPIP is a really great solution. Just yesterday, I did a a webinar, a CELPIP webinar, and um, let's just see here. Let's see if I can find it. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, it doesn't look like I have it. Let's see if I can find this. Interesting. I'm not entirely certain. I guess it's the, uh, <laughs> it's the, I don't know what this is. I'm totally confused. Okay. I did a little search just to see here and, um, I'm just looking to see if I can find the event and it doesn't look like on my Facebook page. No. Anyways, yesterday, stay tuned you guys, because I am going to be doing a whole bunch of new things um, in partnership with CellPip, which is the other language testing uh, site. So watch for notifications on the webinars that are coming. Um, I have a podcast planned and we're going to go right here live with one of the, the cell pip uh, representatives to talk about um, how to basically how to score higher on your cell pip uh, tests. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Um, Yeah, so Syed, okay, we'll answer this last one. Can I, taking up a job in another foreign country other than Canada, um, negatively affect my PR application? Can't wait for 29 months unemployed. No, you can do whatever you want. It's not going to negatively affect. Here's a good question from John. Actually, I'll give you an applause. This is a great question. Okay, if someone is on a work permit uh, and quit the job prior to the work permit expiration and decided to come back to the company, work permit still valid. Do I need to contact IRCC? Thanks for answering. John, I don't, I don't have all the circumstances, but I'll tell you, if you're in Canada and you quit your, your job, your work permit is still valid for that employer. And excuse me, you then decide to go back to that employer. Um, the employer has employer compliance obligations to notify IRCC when you quit and ESDC when you quit. Um, if it's an LMIA based work permit, especially if you indicate that, uh, um, the, the work permit is, uh, well, actually I don't even know if it's employer specific. Like if it is employer specific, you can always go back. Uh, yeah, you can always go back during the course while the work permit is valid. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any weird situations, but generally speaking, yeah, if it's still valid, work permits only expire when, when they, have, you know, hit the expiry date or the person who holds it has a removal order that becomes enforceable. Uh, okay, I will wrap up probably, let's see here. Okay, let's tackle one last one from Kelvin. 
I received a letter. Oh, okay. I received a letter requesting for some additional information in PR application. I did a paper application. I submitted the amended form using the web form. Does the web form actually work? It's pretty much the only avenue that you have, Kelvin, to send it back unless you've linked your application to your online account. Um, and, and I recommend, well, you've already submitted it. Otherwise, I would have said, like, we do a ton of responses, helping people respond. And so, um, uh, yeah, the web form is, is the route if that's what the instruction said. All right. So it looks to me like we are now ready to, um, uh, to, to wrap things up. So I want to express appreciation to everybody who has been watching. And, um, and Merry Christmas to all of you. This is such a wonderful season. I absolutely love it. You know, all of us at Healthy Immigration Law, all of us lawyers, um, we are so, so delighted to, to work with you guys. And this live um, Q&A is sponsored by Healthy Immigration Law. And if you slide over here, you can check out our team. You can learn more about us, where we practice out of. I'm in Lethbridge. Alicia's in Calgary. Uh, Chanel's in Toronto. Cedric is in Ottawa. He frequently teleworks, so he has a lot of... Uh, flexibility in different different locations and uh, and Igor who's soon to be our newest lawyer um, is is also based in Calgary and some of you will have also connected with Prem who is our intake specialist and another valued part of the healthy immigration law team so thanks so much everybody for joining us today and uh, I wish you all the very very best we'll be back tomorrow at noon mountain time with Alicia and another Canadian immigration live Q&A all right, guys, take care. And if there's ever anything that we can do to help you, remember the lawyers of Healthy Immigration Law are here to do so. Just click on the links below. Take care, and I'll leave you with this final message.